Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Today is September 13th. Oh my gosh. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing the multiplex alignment. What I've completed on this radio is the FM alignment, but I want to talk about that a little bit. I got a few emails from a few people about it. <clears throat> and that's going to lead into a little bit of a philosophical top talk about doing this work. So why don't I start right there? Uh, you, you've probably heard me say a number of times that um, repairing these radios and in particular doing the alignment is an iterative process where you're passing through something once, twice, maybe three, four times, each time getting a little better at it, each time getting a little better result. So uh, I've come to accept this years ago. I accepted that, that this is the way it works. And there's no reason to try to achieve perfection on the first or second time through. Maybe not even the third time. There will come a point where, yes, trying to get it right and get it finished and get it done will come around. But that, that, that time hasn't come yet. So yesterday during the alignment, um, when I was attempting to develop this shape on my uh, scope, uh, for a brief while I had a bit of a flat topped deal. It was kind of, kind of a weird looking thing. Um, which I then moved on to sharpen more into this shape. Um, so a, a lot of you realize, and I'm sure I commented, did, did I not? Did it not come out of my mouth? That a lot of these radios use a flattened topped uh, response curve, and that that's achieved by tuning uh, some uh, of the resonant circuits a little bit this way, and others a little bit that way, and you can eventually get kind of a, a squarish or flattish top shape here. And the important thing is, um, before the response has faded away, that you've achieved enough bandwidth in here. Now, I didn't do any of that yesterday because there's something more to this story that I have not been talking about. So I'm going to talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, so that's the whole thing, is uh, if, if you expect yourself to get something perfectly right first time through, um, that's probably a mistake. Um, in fact, a long time ago, I came up with this uh, little phrase that I've used over and over and over throughout my life. And that's the, this is the phrase. The first time through can be written off to education. It's true for everything. I've also uh, realized in my life that there's always a cost to education. You're going to pay money to a school. You're going to spend time learning from someone else. The time is the cost. That someone else who's teaching you is paying a price because they're spending some of their time with you. Incidentally, human beings, we don't actually spend money. We spend time. That's what we've got that we spend. So I'm trying to spend my time in the most effective way here uh, and by, by, by thinking about these basic principles and that. So, so not to get too excited uh, if things aren't 100% at this point. Remember, the primary reason I'm doing the alignment at this point is to try to detect component problems. In other words, if I cannot align something, if something's way out of whack, then I'll start thinking there's another part in this radio that needs to be hunted down and replaced. So that, that's also in the back of my mind. Um, I've made it very complicated for myself because A, I'm not terribly experienced with doing FM radios. Two, I'm using equipment uh, like this guy uh, I'm just learning to use and I've been doing work on that. If you watch lots of my videos, you saw me work away on that. Once again, spending time with it, trying to learn about it, uh, paying that price. Well, I've paid that price. I've got a pretty good idea how this guy works. But there's more to this guy that needs to be uh, realized or talked about, which I will in just a moment. And then I have my other generator down here, which is really a good a good generator, this guy here, which I'm using too. Um, it is actually really designed for FM radios, period. This other guy, this guy up here, he's actually meant for television sets. But parts of television sets, the audio part is an FM receiver in a television set. Um, frequencies are a little different, I believe, but, uh, but other than that, there's a lot of similarities. So. Now, what, what have I left out? Oh yes, what's what's the magic? What's the magic that's in this uh, TV alignment generator? Uh, if you watch me working on this, then you will have heard me or watched me discover that this has an extra circuit in it. That's the one of the previous owners of this built and installed in there. It's a tube and everything. 
uh, at a glance it looked like it was just part of the machine but in fact it's an additional thing based on a magazine story from 1960 something that extra circuit enables this guy to create these kinds of marks these kinds of very very uh, sharp refined marks now you saw me attempt to use a marker amp to generate a mark at this point all I was doing was using this guy running at 10.7 or so and allowing his signal to come on top of the signal of the other generator and the result of that is a very hard to see squiggle in the line which is stretched out and you have to use your judgment as to where the middle is whoops where it, it's stretched out and you have to use your judgment as to where the middle is on it you know I tried it I guess I didn't say anything I just found it unsatisfactory knowing that if I can get this guy working the way it's intended to work I'll have sharp little pips and what's the secret of this thing without getting into it right now the pips will be generated by an audio by an audio frequency and the audio frequency of course the bandwidth of an audio thing is very tiny compared to this this frequency of, of uh, 10 megahertz here so the pit will end up very 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 tiny and very sharp that's the idea so I'm hoping I will finish today's work here successfully we'll see how that goes success by the way for me I'm going through this for the first time so success is just getting through it the result isn't even important to me right now that means you know finding where these coils are making sure I'm doing the right coil all that kind of stuff and overcoming all the little problems that will probably happen as I, as I try to make this uh, this go. So, okay, so uh, hopefully we're clear now. Everybody can relax. The world is not going to end if this takes me another day or two anyway. So, okay. Now, let's take a look at this four-step thing. I'm going to put it right up on the screen here for you to see. Here we are. four steps. Step one is setting a level on the signal generator. Step two is adjusting a trap. Step three is the actual alignment. Step four is the uh, checking, uh, alignment may not be the right word here. Check, uh, step four is um, uh, ensuring the stereo separation is maximized. So that's what's going on. There's alternatives down here. If you don't have the right equipment, here's some other things you can try. Uh, and if you're really careful, it's basically what this is saying. If you do this really carefully, you'll probably be okay. But this is a more technical approach. Um, so step one, I just read through it and then I'm gonna try to do it. Connect a composite signal generator, which I'm fortunate enough to have in my shop, to the antenna terminal through the matching pad as in the FM alignment. Okay, that's actually done. Tune, tune the radio to the frequency of the generator. Uh, my generator is stuck on 100 megahertz, plus or minus a little bit. This is interesting. Using an audio VTVM connected to the record socket on the back of the uh, radio, you then adjust the generator output to achieve 120 millivolts of audio on the VTVM. At that point, you know the generator is at the right output. One of the things I've learned about this, uh, and different than an AM radio, is these FM radios are very sensitive to being overloaded by test signals and things like that. They end up looking at your scope or whatever it is, and it's just a pile of spaghetti um, because of these overloads. And it's not easy necessarily to realize that is what is happening. So you could slightly overload the radio and then go ahead and do a bunch of tuning stuff. Hmm, bad move. Hopefully I haven't done that. So that's what this is all about, ensuring we don't overload the radio with the signal. Wonder why they didn't have this done in some way earlier on. Uh, since, since the level of the FM output is, uh, is an issue. Both of my signal generators, the last bits of use I got out of them, I had them both set to the minimum output. They couldn't go any lower. I'd have to pad things to get the lower. Okay, so I'm going to hook this up and get going. Okay, so one of the first things I've got to do is make sure I've got this voltmeter 
set up properly and understood properly by me. Okay, so this is a professional grade uh, audio meter. This came from a radio station, a CHFI in Toronto. Right up here is a sticker that says CHFI on it. So thank you, CHFI. You must wonder how I got your meter, but I got it. Um, the the scale here, like uh, the meter's a, a decibel meter, uh, really. So the scale is in two uh, denoted in two ways, either decibels. It's a DBM, by the way, uh, a milliwatt, 600 ohms, zero. Um, is, but we're going to use it in a voltage mode. There's two scales for voltage here. There's one that ends in one and one that ends in three. And the scales here kind of go like that. One, three, one, three, one, three. So you pick the scale according to which the scale up here, according to which one of these you've picked. I picked point three because what I want to achieve is a point one two voltage. So with this on point three, the three here becomes point three, point three, point two, point one, point one two zero, right in here. That's where I want the meter to end up when set this way. This meter sometimes gives me trouble. What doesn't give me trouble? So I have to keep an eye on it. The switch here is sometimes a little wonky in that. Um, and it, it always falls, like these kinds of meters always fall right to the bottom when, they're, when there's no voltage. They go right off scale. Looks like they're broken almost, but they're not. Okay. Um, that's the meter. And I have the input to the meter plugged into the audio record out here. I just picked one channel. I'm not sure which. Did they specify it? Well, it's actually confusing what they specify here because they say audio VTVM to record sockets uh, or record sockets. And they put uh, 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 quotes around it on access brackets. I guess this is an access bracket down here. I guess this is what they call the access bracket. So I think I got everything set up and ready to go. The uh, signal generator doesn't say much about it because we're just setting the level. Okay, let's turn on the receiver. Okay, now we're going to tune the receiver to the output of the signal generator, which is around 100. Okay, so watch that meter, meter jump. Anybody see the meter jump? No jumping. Okay, we need to hear this. Oh boy, <laughs> I just crashed the airplane. Well, you know, that's a real lesson. Um, that in itself. Well, what happened there? You couldn't really see what happened. But as soon as that sound came on, I went into a bit of a panic and started just turning all kinds of controls on the front of this thing, trying to turn it down. Well, I know which control is the volume control. But while I was doing that, the airplane stalled and crashed. Once again, good thing I'm not a pilot. <laughs> yeah, good thing that if my patient dies, it's really not that bad a thing. It's not the end of the world. Well, it would be to the person who owns this. Okay, so let's now calm myself down. Let's take this off sweep. That's the mistake I made there. You have a nice thousand hertz tone to listen to now. Oh, lovely, lovely. Hello meter. Now, the volume control should have no bearing on what's coming out of the record. That's probably why they said put it on record. There's nothing coming up on the meter. Well, I'm going to crank up the output and hope the meter goes up. Let's see what happens here. Well, that's full tilt and nothing there. Okay, I'm going to do a little tuning. Oh, the meter's moving. Not sure why it moved there. Hmm, that's a bad sign. Good, a good chance the meter itself is just not working. So I'm going to flip it down. The output is extremely low. Yeah, there's something there, but I wouldn't trust that. Fortunately, I have another meter in case this one just gets to be too much of a headache. I have another meter, which is, uh, yeah, this, look at that. I mean, you say, well, Jim, why don't you clean the switch? 
done it many times. Okay, now if that's the real level, first it's way low, second I'm going to change the output level on here. Oh, let's put the speakers up a little bit here. So I'm turning down the level. That's interesting. Okay, that's at minimum now. I don't really know what's going on. Let's go up. This is really nerve-wracking. Yeah, generally, if it's in the middle of this scale, it's towards near 120. Let's lift up here. Maybe something's tuning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm changing the output of my uh, signal generator. The frequency is changing a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. All very uncomfortable stuff. So uh, some of this nonsense could be because because the earlier alignments that I did aren't 100 percent, and uh, it, it, it could be causing this. I don't really know for sure where we at now. We're still way below, way below this amount. 120 millivolts. Way below. I'm going to bring down the other meter and switch switch meters here uh, because the other one is consistent. Okay, let's see how this guy goes. This one's a little easier to operate. Maybe there's a point, point 0.1 scale. Let's just see how they're doing this. It says decibels. doesn't say dBm. Um, pointer normally off scale with zero input. You're trying to keep people from turning the adjustment to try to make it sit on the zero here uh, because that's how most meters operate, but not, not this type of meter. Well, we have a little little signal reading here. It looks like it's varying with the signal. Point 0.1. I think if I flip it on the point 0.1 scale, it's going to go right over. Yeah. So again, we got, even this one's got a bit of trouble. That's one volt. So that's 100 millivolts. So 1.2 is roughly where I'm sitting right now. Oh. <laughs> like that. And what did the other meter say? Gibberish. The other meter said gibberish. Okay, I'm comfortable with the meter operating. Let's uh, get everything tuned up here properly. Can, can we get any more out of it? Yeah, strong evidence of poor alignment here. But we're just setting the level. Okay, don't want anybody tune anything from here. So that's about 130 there. Can we turn this down? Oh yeah. There we go. Well, I'd say that's 120 millivolts there, roughly. Looks like it just dropped to 110. There must be a reason for the 20. They would have said 100 millivolts, but there must be a reason for the 120 millivolts. Okay, we'll carry on and keep an eye on this because it's, it's fluctuating a little bit. It could be because I'm moving around in the shop, maybe I'm affecting things a little bit. So we've done this right. Tune to frequency of generator, check. Record, check. Generator set to make 120 millivolts. One volt. 0.1 volt. How sure am I of that? How sure am I I'm reading the scale rate? 
Oh, sure, am I? Uh, let's get some absolute truth going here. Absolutely sure. Uh, uh, just try another meter. Try this one. Never use this in this kind of situation. It's really, I don't think it's the best meter for it. Let me give it a try and see what happens. Just for fun. Oh, here we are. Oh, it's all out of focus. Maybe I should have used this meter right from the start. Well, that's pretty close to 120. It's almost exactly what this guy's saying. Right on the money. Hey, how do you like that? That's reassuring. Two guys saying the same thing. When we're a touch high, let's see if I can reduce it a bit here. How to get up there? I put my hand over here. Now, oh, lots of influences. Hey, look at that. It's kind of a stand back and take a reading situation. This thing's tuning, right? I discovered when you change the output level, the, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the guy retunes a little bit. So, okay, so there's 120. Now, can we m get more out of it? Don't like digital meters at this point. I like the indicating meters because every little movement, you can see the effect on the, on the uh, pointer. You can't see it on the digital one. 1.3. Should we just leave it at that? My hand's back here. Pull your hand away. Might you get any more accurate than that? Probably not. Okay, and it probably won't stay. Anyway, that's good. Okay, I'm sure now. I feel really good. 120. Now I gotta find uh, the voltmeter is connected to junction. You know what? I'll, I'll use a different voltmeter. Junction of Q206 an emitter junction of Q206 let's try reading here junction of Q206 emitter and R228 so I'm going to stop the video because uh, I think some coffee must be ready now we'll let this sit and everything warm up a little more and uh, that's what I'm going to do Coffee's too hot to drink, so I thought I'd come back in here. What's happened? I've only been out for a few minutes. Where'd everything go? As far as I remember, everything was left 120 sitting there or so. Somebody's tuning here. Somebody's tuning away. Who's drifting? How can I even know which one of these guys is drifting? It's less likely the receiver is drifting and more likely my instrument is drifting if that's what's happened. Bah! Well, this makes doing this kind of work very difficult. Things are not stable. And they've had this guy on for quite a while now. Let's see what happens here. Quieter. Okay, if somebody came in my shop while I was out and monkeyed with it. Mr. Murphy! Mr. Murphy, are you here? Where's that guy? Oh, for crying out loud. This is exactly the kind of thing that just destroy this kind of uh, effort if you don't uh, keep an eye on it all the time. Of course, this meter's not hooked up to anything, so stop looking at that. <laughs> it's this one. For sure. Uh... Well, I'm going to tune it a little more here. It does seem to be genuinely lower. Okay, a little adjustment here, an attenuator I can turn up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, as I'm turning it up, it's tuning. Oh my gosh, this is just ridiculous. How's it? Uh, 
boy. Okay, so maybe the name of the game is while I'm doing this work, each time I go to do a stage or whatever I'm going to do, I got to look at that meter and make sure it's somewhere in this range of 120. What we're doing here after this is we're simply peaking things and minimizing things, so we don't really need a quantitative uh, measurement of what we're doing. It's just a kind of a qualitative deal. Right, and I've got to find this junction of Q206 emitter and R228. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, so it's a little hard to see in the camera, but Q206 is right here. That's him right there. And the resistor they're talking about is right here. And so the emitter lead is back there. I don't know if you can really see what I'm pointing at exactly. Um, the way I determined uh, the lead connection to the resistor uh, to make it possible is I just shone a light through the back of the board like this so I could bring up the trace and I could see clearly how the resistor is connected to the transistor. And it matches the uh, circuit layout diagrams. So. 100% sure of that. I'm going to make a connection to it. Um, I, have, I have some handy things for that. Let's see. Turn off the unit while I do this. And I don't want that shorting to anything in there either. I think that looks okay. Um, I can't quite see in there. I'm really missing my close-up camera. Really missing it. I can get a lot closer with this camera, but it's awkward in a tight spot. It's a large camera you're looking through right now, physically large. I think we're okay as long as I keep the, the lead over here. So now um, what we want to do, what do we want to do? We want to, to read a uh, voltage off of that. VTVM to that location. Adjust L203. Okay, let me figure out where, where that is. L203. I've been using this this can as a landmark all the time, so I obviously I know where this one can is, and I sort of trace from there. It's right up here. We want it. Hmm. Okay, it's actually easier to see from the other side because it's actually a large, fairly large coil. This is a uh, this is a trap. Here it is here. Voltmeter on the junction, adjusting L203, adjust for minimum indication of 67.5 kilohertz signal. So my signal generator will produce that signal. Once we are ready, I will flip the signal generator to that. Doesn't that, isn't that gonna, uh, look at the output, isn't that gonna ruin the output? That's what I mean, every time I go to do a test, I have to double check the output is correct. You can't just set it and leave it. That's the situation here. Okay. Um, so, so I don't have the voltmeter hooked up yet. Let's get the voltmeter connected. I'll use this this meter here. Doesn't say much about where to. I guess the ground's got to be the chassis. I think there's a statement in there somewhere. All readings to chassis. Now I want this connected to the... Uh, what, if I, what if I use crazy long clip leads to do that? Um, 
Good question. Generally speaking, long clip leads, big problems. Shorter than that. And the set is still off here. Okay, Am I mumbling? Am I muttering? Yeah. Hmm. That's not going to work so well. Let's try. Let me get one of these. Okay, this all clipped to the voltmeter. Okay. May not be the best arrangement, but it is an arrangement. Okie dokie. So we're set here on, I don't know, 15 volts. Let's put a little higher to start. No idea what to expect. Okay. I think, I think maybe the meter went low because I turned the radio off. Let's turn it on. Everybody's moving. The sky moved. The sky moved. It went right back. Roughly 120. A usable amount. Okay, let's see a reading on the meter. Now I'm going to... I want to step in front of the camera here. Turn that slug and we will see what happens here. Okay, watching the meter. Ah, nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing. Boop, boop, warning, warning. Nothing happening, nothing happening. Oh, I don't have the 67 on. Duh, duh. Okay, 67. That's 67. I don't hear anything, but we still see it on the meter. They're exactly the same. Hmm. Uh, I can't imagine this is working out. Okay, I'm going to try moving the slug. Oh, the 120 thing has completely disappeared. The slug has no effect. What's going on? Here we go. <laughs> How can this be? Just for a minimum indication of 67.5 kilohertz signal. What, what have I not got right here? Oh, I think, like this meter is telling me there's no RF anymore, and this one's telling me everything's something showing up at that test point. Tune the radio. Let's tune the radio. So let me keep an eye on. Here, put one eye on one meter and the other eye on the other meter, and I'm going to step in front of the wall. And I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to step in front of one of them. I'm going to try to get this to say 120 again. Maybe it's a tuning issue. Volume up, volume up, volume up so we can hear what's going on. Okay, so there's no, no you shouldn't hear anything. You should not hear anything. situation now is, let's see, what has happened here? Why would it be that that meter no longer shows any output? Uh, flipping the signal generator uh, to 67 kilohertz, either it's disturbed the signal generator or that, that change makes this reading unimportant why they have it set if they had you set it of course they imagine you've only got one VTBM so you can't be measuring two things at once they might be thinking that um, if they're thinking that then you set it in the first step and then leave it and don't worry about it now I've monkeyed with it so it's, it's all messed up everything's messed up again so hey another story here about uh, that might if you do this kind of work this might help you feel a little better about it um, 
Imagine if you had to go through a large woods. You've never been through it. You've heard there's a path in there, but the path is not marked very well. But you, you know there's a path in there. And then two people show up, two locals show up, and they say, oh, we, we know how, how to get through that on that path. So you ask the one guy, well, well how, how do you know where the path is? Oh, I've walked it. I've walked it 20 times through the woods. No problem. I get you, get you from here. You just come with me. I'll walk you through the woods. And then you turn to the other guy, and he says, well, I've walked the path 10 times. The other 10 times I wandered off the path, and I ended up in the woods for a long period of time. A lot of interesting stuff in the woods, by the way. But I managed to get back on the path again, and I feel pretty good that if I were anywhere in the woods, I could find the path. Now, who are you going to have help you get through the woods? Which of those two, two people? So I'm trying to be the second guy here. And I'm currently wandering in the woods of this receiver. And i got to be comfortable with wandering around. The path is, who knows, somewhere over there. But I'm over here. and I try to be comfortable with that. Especially initially, like what I'm doing right now. I don't get frustrated. I don't get upset. I don't get panicky. Although I am sweating. <laughs> um, keep calm and carry on, basically, is the... Uh, is the deal here. So um, I also have accepted that this is an iterative process. You go through it a number of times. You know, every receiver is a little different, and uh, so be the case. So what to do now? Uh, I'm going to revert back to the first step. I'm going to reset the uh, level properly. Leave it alone. And then. We really have to wonder, well, there's a couple things. First of all, this 67 kilohertz trap is not the most important thing in the radio. In fact, it even says here, note, if the generator doesn't have a 67.5 kilohertz signal, step two will have to be omitted. L203 must be tuned on, tuned on, must be tuned on. <laughs> the sentence kind of just died there. It's kind of similar to this. For this type of adjustment, the tuning of... Yeah, I, it's just on the next page. But the, I don't know where the end of this is. Must be tuned on. Well, that's if you don't have a 67.5, and I do. So my, uh, my uh, machine there says 67 kilohertz. They didn't waste their time with the point and the 5. Okay, let me uh, stop. I'm going to drink coffee and reset things, and we'll take another run at this. Okay, so this is part of the uh, manual for my signal generator. It has an extensive manual explaining in detail how to do all the things I'm trying to do, but I am trying to follow the instructions that come with the receiver as much as I can. So the part I just want to talk about is this paragraph here. This is what I'm working on right now, more or less, and this diagram. I'll take a look at this diagram. So just read this. In both uh, monaural and stereo FM transmission, some stations also include store casting. Uh, this is the, uh, um, oh my god, I forgot the, the common name for it. Uh, the Muzak. This is Muzak. Broadcasted hidden inside the FM signal that you might be listening to at home. There's another signal there, and your radio is trying to ignore this other signal. And that's exactly what I'm working on. The other signal is running uh, from 60 kilohertz to 74 uh, kilohertz. In the middle is 67. That's where that number comes from, 67 or 67.5. So if you look over here, um, I, I explained much earlier in an earlier video, and I don't know if I even posted it, that there's a couple ways of looking at how an FM stereo signal is transmitted. And, and one way is to look at it from a switching point of view, and you're switching the speakers 38,000 times a second back and forth, left, right, left, right, left, right, and the signal's coming in, left, right, left, right, left, right. You're just, your receiver is just channeling the lefts to the left speaker and the rights to the right speaker. Another way of looking at it, though, is that the uh, radio is has subcarriers in it. So you have, down here, you have your regular radio signal up to 15 kilohertz. As you left channel plus right channel so this is essentially everything this is a mono signal here and then tricky smart engineers back in the day figured out that if you could transmit another signal it would be left channel minus the right channel that would give you the opportunity through manipulation to end up with 
a separate left and a separate right. So they do that at 38 kilohertz. And in this diagram, they're showing us two sidebands. I guess you're only interested in one of these two sidebands. And so, so this is a composite FM signal containing the mono signal here, the left minus right here, the gain here, which receivers, I guess maybe receivers do different things with this. You only need one of them though, I'm pretty sure. Uh, to get the 38 kilohertz and to make sure it matches perfectly with the transmitting station, the radio station, a 19 kilohertz signal is transmitted here. And then your receiver doubles it to get the 38 and then uses the 38 to, to demodulate these, these guys here. What's missing in this diagram, they could have gone a little further. They could have extended this line out and drew another box out here and labeled it SCA for uh, yeah, sub subsidiary carrier assignment. Uh, obviously, an engineer came up with that term. Store casting sounds more like what, uh, or Muzak. The Muzak is up here. And this is what I am working on right now is the way in which this receiver suppresses this so it has no influence on the rest of the radio. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm telling my, so I'm setting my signal generator to send a 67 kilohertz signal at the receiver, and then I'm adjusting the trap, the coil in the trap circuit to try to tune it right on to 67. And so I'm looking for a minimum output from the uh, from the radio. For some reason, we're measuring it. Why, why? Like, yeah, of course, we're measuring it early in the receiver because <clears throat> it's not going to make it to the speaker. It's not supposed to make it to the speaker, so I can't measure it, uh, you know, at the audio part of the radio. This it shouldn't be there. The whole idea is for it not to be there. That's got to be why we're tapped in on the uh, base of that, of that uh, transistor. Okay, now something's going wrong with this whole thing. I reset. Let me let me flip back here. I've reset the uh, the level. You can see it's, it's it's sunk just a wee bit here, but it's still there. That's probably in the okay range. We can let's just knock it up a little bit here. Let me turn up the volume because I think things are still tuning away here. do that it retunes the radio. I enjoy tuning things like this so I mean like a lot of radio people love turning the knobs so you notice I have a lot of knobs in here to turn. <laughs> There's a reason for that. I like it. Okay so now we're gonna take, take a look at the voltage over here. This is the voltage at that transistor. The actual voltage there is, is uh, 10 volts. That's supposed to vary as I adjust the trap. So right now there should be no 67 kilohertz signal coming through. I'm going to flip my generator so it sends a 67. I'm not going to retune anything. Watch this meter. I got I to do it this way. There's only so much room in here for the camera and me. Okay, so we're going to flip it to Now that, that didn't change one bit. This did not change one bit. <laughs> yes, chances are this trap is set right. Um, you know, really, uh, what, what would have happened to this radio that the trap wouldn't work? I guess there are things that could happen. No two slugs, one slug in here, just a single coil being tuned. So, against my better judgment, you know, I've only turned this a little wee bit, because I want it to stay where it is. You know, there's another possibility. I'm in the wrong coil. Uh, here, here's a lesson you've probably learned if you do this kind of work. While you're nearly finished your alignment work, you realize you've stuck the tool in the wrong coil, back to square one. So in the early stages, um, while I'm making all the mistakes like I'm doing now, uh, making that mistake 
isn't going to break your heart because you're not trying to achieve perfection anyway so if you undermine yourself as you go ahead it's it's, it's fine what's in the back of my mind is there will be an attempt to make this perfect and it's not now that's for sure so uh, I try to protect my uh, my psyche my psyche uh, while I'm doing this goodness knows if I had a really bad day in the shop and then I went and took it out on my wife that would not be a good thing <laughs> so I do my best to leave here happy um, so how could this be the wrong coil it's coil L203. 203. Where's my manual? Let me just look in the book here. Oh, this isn't the manual. <laughs> that, that, that'll be good. We have, we have to look on the computer. Let's look on the computer. Okay. Not there. We look here. Here we are. Here's Q. Oh! Did I say 203? No, it's L. What did I do? L? It is the wrong coil I've been doing. How did that happen? Because of me. I think I think what happened was my eye dropped low for a minute and I read TR206. It's L203. What what am I in? I'm in I'm in don't get upset now. Don't get upset. Keep calm. Carry on. I think this represents the L opening right here. That's is that where my tool is. Let me just look and see. Well, it's the hole is basically um, up and up and towards. Was there another hole in there? It doesn't say anything here. L L203. Six is right. Nice. 67 kilocycles. I can't be wrong. Forget that. Whatever that is. Oh. But but see how they have a dotted line here and a great big circle around it? That's representing the big coil behind it. And you know, the next big coil is way up here and something over here. This is all alone. Um it's on the far side where this can is. So the can is there. I'm in the right coil. I'm in the right coil. I'm in the right coil. L203. Look, it's connected right up to the transistor. And to this great big, uh, or fair size capacitor I will have changed. Change this. Maybe, maybe this is just way out, way, way, way out. Now what harm is there in me whacking this thing out? Perhaps it's tuned correctly and I'm about to just, just mess it all up. Um, okay, so we're going to do the flag thing on my, uh, on my tool there. Just need a little bit of tape. Put a flag, whoops. Put a flag on so I can count the number of turns I'm doing. There we go. So without even looking at the meter. One turn, two turns, three turns. Meter's still at ten. Four turns getting tight. Five turns. It's nothing happening at all. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's a chance there's nothing happening because maybe there's no 67 coming out of my signal generator. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe the radio's uh, signal level or the retuning, maybe by changing the output frequency, somehow my... my uh, the transmitter, uh, my generator changed frequency. What, what do we hear? We what exactly is that noise?
What happens if I listen to that and turn this? Two. Nothing. So here's my guess. My guess is that in today's world, SCA broadcasting doesn't exist much anymore at all. There's too many alternatives and better ways of doing things. The picture an FM radio floating on the top of an elevator and having to be tuned periodically and all that stuff. They got a lot better ways of pumping uh, music around. So chances are there is no 67 signal in the stations that this receiver will tune in. So it even says in here, you know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. <laughs> Oh, that's disappointing. I don't like it when things like this just don't work at all. It suggests to me there's, you know, one of the one of the things I'm trying to do is determine if there isn't some component problems inside this receiver. Well, I'm gonna just make a note. There, I made a note in my head. If this is the situation. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Okay, the next thing is. Uh, same kind of setup. Test point two. And now we're tuning 204, 205, L204, L205, and TR206. Adjust for maximum indication. Uh oh. Where's the meter? Test point two. Test point two. Okay. So, good time to stop for a minute. Uh, lick my wounds here. Actually, I'm going to drink coffee, is what I'm going to do. And we'll attempt that. We'll attempt that. Hey, let me talk about Canadian politics just before I take off. So we're really approaching our federal election. It's only a matter of, I don't know, five, six, seven days now. So everything's heating up politically in Canada. Um, and uh, today in Canada, there are going to be street demonstrations. They've been organized to be held at the in front of hospitals of all the stupid places to do this hospital and emergency uh, entrances this is this happened already a couple of times this one's a very big uh, big attempt anyway of organizing these demonstrations people marching around you know no vaccine mandates all that kind of stuff it's happening in many countries it's happening here too and the country's discussion is around how to force these people out of the way well that's difficult because it's legal to demonstrate so you can't just force people out of the way. There's no law existing that says they can't demonstrate there because who in their right minds would ever demonstrate at the entrance to a hospital? Who in their right minds would yell at doctors and nurses? Well, these people are not in their right minds. How can I say that? You know, here's my thought on that. What's going wrong in the world? We have a confirmation bias support machine systems operating everywhere. It's called the internet. It's called Twitter. It's called all that stuff. Everything. Everything is feeding you what you want to hear. And that just results in very, very powerful confirmation bias. Keep hearing the same thing over and over. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. If you hear it over and over and over, you're a human being and you can't not absorb it. You can't. We are fallible. We are weak. And we have created a system in our midst, the internet, and the way the algorithms operate, which just takes one of our weaknesses and uses it to the advantage of, guess who? All those corporations, Google, Twitter, all those people. And you think they don't know what they're doing? They know fully well what they're doing, but they won't stop because of the money. They need to be forced. So I think society will eventually take care of this. This kind of thing has happened many times through history. Almost every time a new communications method shows up, people abuse it until until something is done to stop it. So, you know, like 150 years ago, it was printed handbills, handbills full of lies, stamped up or nailed up on your telephone pole in your neighborhood. You'd stop and read the lies in the handbill. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing new here. You know why? Because the common thing is people. We're the same people we were 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years ago, 
people physiologically emotionally mentally all that stuff exactly the same as us yeah you know what I think about sometimes I think about the Egyptian society where they ran a stable what I think was a stable society for thousands of years thousands looks like the United States can't make it to 300 I don't know okay that's enough of that <laughs> That's enough of that. Thank you very much for listening to me whine. I don't, I don't mean to whine on my videos, but uh, hard not to. It really is hard not to. Okay, coffee, coffee. Okay, so tracking down test point two. Um, test point one, which I've been using, um, what happened here is the uh, whoever built this uh, left the lead sticking out quite a bit on this particular spot and then bent the lead back over so it became a loop, a little tiny loop that is easy to spot. So I was looking for the same thing over here. Test point two, wire sticking out and looped. You know, the loop is nice to clip to and all that kind of stuff. No loop. And there's no way you can use this diagram to locate this on the board. So we have to go to, uh, let's go to the first, the um, schematic. Uh, you know what, whoops, whoops, we're not gonna go to the schematic there. Ooh, we buy it. Well, we don't need to look at the schematic. Um, even if test point two is on here somewhere, this won't help me physically find it. Where I found it is on these board diagrams, which is the right spot for it, right here, test point two. So I've located this and I've proven it out. Um, what, I've, what I did was uh, I, I saw that there's a trace here and this is the second trace in from the edge of the board. Now, there's four term terminals in this trace and so I have found it for sure and there's nothing going on there's no there's no test point created here so I'm gonna solder I probably solder a little clip leaf hanging out from the back here uh, to connect the meter to uh, so test point so let's look at the radio okay so here we are looking at the board and you see the first trace and then the second trace has four terminals one of those is the, the any one of those will do as a test point if you look at some of the soldering here it's a little unnerving like uh, without it, it almost looks like it's cracked and I've seen cracked solder and it this has the look of it but I don't think it's actually cracked I think it's just just the way things look in here you're going to have to get an even closer uh, view of it to, to be able to see if it's cracked. But the radio is working, so I'm not going to... Uh, cracked solder in a rate I cracked uh, solder on a board like this. Oy, means for a lot of resoldering. Look at that. So you see that kind of white light right in, kind of in the middle there? Blinking on and off. Well, shouldn't there be something soldered in there? <laughs> That's a hole. That's a hole looking right through the other side of the, uh, of the radio here. See, I'm turning the light on and off behind there. Looks like something's missing, but I don't know. Radio works. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to solder in the, the thing. Solder in the thing, and we're going to do the thing. The thing, and then the thing. Okay, I got my clip lead attached. Hook it up to the voltmeter here. This is done. We're giving up on that part of it. So, uh, just for maximum indication, but it doesn't give you a hint as to what may show up on the voltmeter here. Just for maximum indication. 204, 205, this has to do with the 19 kilohertz uh, pilot uh, signal and some other stuff. Whoa, wait a minute. I have not had a stereo signal being sent to this receiver the whole time I've been doing this. Connect composite signal generator to antenna terminal through matching pad. Tune to frequency of generator. I've had the 19 kilohertz pilot off the whole time. 
Okay, well, you know, cost of education, right? Let's keep going. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn on the 19 kilohertz pilot. You must have it on for this. Um, how do you set the level of the 19 kilohertz coming out of the signal generator? Maybe, maybe you just as low as you can get away with. Maybe is a way to do this. Oh, um, well, that, that's why I'm going through it first time, right? It's a write-off. <laughs> it's a complete write-off. Okay, we'll turn on the uh, the pilot here. I'll show you what I got to do about that. Let's turn this. Pilot is on. Okay, we'll go back to five kilohertz. We'll adjust the deviation to 75 kilohertz deviation so it's a proper signal we got to send well unless I flip this the stereo here um, the 19 kilohertz isn't happening let me just put this back up to well we're in stereo now 75 just just below 75 kilohertz 19 kilohertz on this is the pilot level control and it's all over the place Stick it in the middle. Hmm. Okay, a little, a little loosey goosey already. How about coming down out of the sky here? Okay, so this is set to 50 volts. Let's turn on the radio. Hello, hello, turn down the volume. Hello, hello. Did that wake you up? Woke me up. That's not so bad. Now we got other issues here, like uh, the signal level. It's sitting there. Is that an issue? Okay, the voltage we're getting. Something funny going on with this. Something funny is going on. Is my ground wire breaking here? Ground is on. Here's on DC. Test point is on. 19 kilohertz is on. <laughs> no voltage is on. Put this read. That's pretty weird. Uh, maybe it's an AC signal. Is that possible? Yeah, if you're using an audio meter, it's an AC thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's put this over to AC and see what happens. AC. Nothing. Oh, it's not at AC yet. Yes, it was. I have the feeling this is not working at all the way it's supposed to. Okay, on we go. I also have to do enough today to give me meaningful experience for me to think about during the rest of today. Okay, make the meter more sensitive. It's a nothing. Now we're measuring what exactly is it we're trying to measure here? They don't really say, they just say test point two. Oh! Attach oscilloscope to test point two. <laughs> uh, audio VTVM. Certainly disqualifies as a uh, suitable meter. This is actually the last stage where you switch to, oh no, still audio VTVM. Where did I read scope? Where did that just pop into my, my view here? Yeah, clearly I'm saying, oh, attach oscilloscope. Alternate method, attach oscilloscope, peak the same, peak those two coils. Well, we don't want to do the alternate yet. Composite signal generator. We're on stereo left right now. 
So it's trying to send out a left channel signal. What if I go stereo right? Would, would, would that do something? I don't know. Let's try it. Stereo right. My earlier experimenting with the uh, separation in this radio was it was it wasn't separating at all. What about the uh, the little stereo light? Is that on? No. Well, we need that stereo light to come on for sure to do this kind of stuff. Uh, maybe. I don't know that for sure. Let's make it come on. Did it come on? It did not come on. Radio not tuned properly? Uh, did it say turn on the AFC? It says turn on the AFC for a different technique. Not the technique I'm doing. Well, my, you know, really, I'm gonna mess everything up. I'm gonna have to retune either the receiver or my signal generator. See if I can get some something to show up somewhere. Something to show up on this meter. I'm going back to the DC side of things because I really think that's what is happening. That's probably a zero error now. Get rid of it. just nothing at this test point nothing at the test point um, okay so I have the sub carrier interesting you know there's a there's a, a position on this little on off switch here for the uh, 19 kilohertz and one position is set 19 kilohertz sub carrier set it what maybe you flip this and now this meter tells you something. It tells you there isn't much there, right? I don't know, I'm gonna have to read the manual on this. Let's set it back to normal. So with the deviation is around 75 kilohertz. Maximum subcarrier. Let's tune here and see if we can make that light come on. I'm gonna have to rely on seeing it on the camera here. A little tricky to see, but I think we'll be able to see it. And I can do this. And I could do this. Oh, it should be easy to see now. Okay. I'm going to tune the signal generator and try to make that little light come on. This is quite disturbing. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to tune it a little wee bit. You can hear when it when it's flipping into stereo. The meter still says absolutely zero. And I'm going to back down the subcarrier strength. The 19 kilohertz pilot. There it goes off. The settings are about half half the range. I'll go up, it'll probably a little hysteresis here, yeah, about not too much more. To trip it on and off. Okay, so I'm gonna I will trip it on and off. <laughs> not a thing. Put this on AC. Don't worry about the zero. Now trip it on and off. Nothing. Nothing. Should I say that one more time? Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna set up something a little different here. I think. Uh, you know what? It's getting to be late in the day here. It's pushing eleven o'clock in the morning. Um. I'm going to stop right at this point, right in the middle of things. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stop uh, at this point. Adjust for maximum indication. And there's no indication. Yeah, 
I don't know what to do at the moment. I'm, I'm worn out here. So I will think about all this. I read up a little more. I read up a little more on my instrument over there. And, uh, um, the, the way I learn, by the way, everybody's, uh, you know that thing about everybody has a learning style. Do you realize that's false? There is no learning. There aren't different learning styles. Um, I, I'll tell you this story. Some guy, a school superintendent in Australia, just dreamed up the idea that people have different learning styles. Just dreamed it up because he was trying to explain why good teachers have failing students and bad teachers have successful students in the classroom. How can this happen? And so what he thought was it must be a certain style and so the poor teacher has a style that works well with those kids. That's what he thought. This idea went through the world like wildfire and everybody believes that. I've certainly heard about it all my life learning styles. I was trained in it when I was working at, uh, at my corporate, uh, at my big job. I had a big job once. And uh, it just everyone takes it for granted. And, and I have talked about this with other people and they just reject it offhand right away because this idea is so sunk down. There's no such thing. Everybody learns basically the same way. So there you go. <laughs> so, uh, you, you, you. so how do you learn? The four stages of adult learning. Okay, first stage is you hear about the thing. I guess, you, I guess you could read about it or something. You hear about it. Second stage, you see a demonstration. Somebody does the thing and you watch. Third, you try it with somebody standing beside you, helping you, pointing things out. And the last stage is you do it on your own. That's how humans learn. That's the stages you need to put people through. Right? Hear about it. See it. Try it with help. Do it on your own. That's how you learn. That's how adults learn. I think that's how children learn too. Okay, enough. I'm, boy, I'm really getting philosophical, but that's just a sign that I'm really struggling here. That's what that is. So I'm off to enjoy the rest of my day, and I'll worry about this tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I plan to get through this. <laughs>